How's it going everyone? Thought I'd do a video on how I make my cider. Today is the day annually where I get my 10 gallons of apple juice. I turn it into hard cider. I um, do it pretty simple. Kind of my whole cheap and easy method applies to the way I do it. Do the cider. Thought I would uh, document it. Show you guys. Um, and you can take a look. The thing you start with is your sanitized fermenters. So since I go pick up my juice, I need to um, have those sanitized ready to go. So let's get on the road and check it out. Here we are, the meat stealing operation. Jonathan, Yo, what's up, man? how long you been doing this uh, for the club? Four years now, I guess. Four years. This man, he is the man. <laughs> he does a great service for this club. Doing and this, Whoa. and this year. Oh, Whoa, wait. Oh, no. <laughs> <Divorce>. <laughs> right. Perfect timing. We have two down. of these <laughs> huge containers. Yeah. I, I, that's off camera. We didn't see that. We didn't see that. But we have 500 gallons, and here is the operation. There is the award-winning cider maker himself. Look at this man, you may recognize him from the brewing TV video. And then we've got the some of the queue here. It's a fun fermentable one, that's yeah. not the practice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I like doing other stuff where you can like toss money in there, other things. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do three of the same recipe with some different variations of the yeast just to see. Very cool. And then try, I was thinking of infusing some tea maybe in another. Oh, really? That could just be good. Try and get a little a sweet tea. Yeah. It is always a relief to get back into the house with the juice intact. Carrying these things to and from the, the car or the van and hauling them down. But anyway, uh, but now I'm going to add some sugar. I'm going to boost the gravity a little bit. I'll take a gravity reading of what these are now, but I like to increase the gravity. I like to make it more like a, I don't know, almost like an apple wine. Um, so I'll show you what I do for that. Um, also, when I heat up, um, I say like a gallon of it to dissolve the sugar, and it'll bring the temperature. These things are kept really cold. It says 42 or 44, and that's so... They were kept even cooler than that, I think, at the orchard, but that's so they don't start to ferment on their own. I'm heating up about a gallon, uh, just over a gallon. Um, no particular reason for that amount necessarily, but uh, this is going to do two things. When I get to stirring in the sugar, it's going to make the sugar dissolve a little easier. And then when I add this one gallon back to the carboys, it'll raise that temperature from 42 44. It'll raise it up a little bit more, um, closer to a good temperature for fermenting. I've done uh, brown sugar ciders, white sugar ciders, turbinado sugar. This year I thought, eh, split the difference. I'm going to do brown and uh, white sugar, and I got about one and a half pounds. I'm just going to do one and a half pounds to each one and go with that. I've dumped the sugar in. Now I'm just stirring it up, uh, making sure it's dissolved fully. I might take the temperature, see what this is up to. I don't want it to be really, really hot, but uh, it does need to be a little bit warm to help bring up the temperature of the other four gallons. And then I'll dump it back into each container and shake it up, stir it up, and then take a original gravity of each one. And they should be about the same. I have the sugar dumped back into both of these. I don't know what temperature the mixture got heated up to. I checked at one point it was at least about 115. I think and I raised it a little bit higher. But when I dumped it back in to this stuff, it brought it up to about 68. So now I have a sanitized racking cane. I don't know if I can get this. And so I have the the sugar edition cider batch, uh, the one gallon plus. Um, you know, the other stuff that was just in here, the four gallons, and I'm just gonna stir both of these up um, very well, and uh, then take a final original gravity reading. So it was 10.53 before the sugar. I guessed I was adding about 13 gravity points of sugar. Um, so I thought it would be more like 10.66, but it looks like it's about 10.61. So maybe the, I don't know, 
sugar doesn't uh, add as much. I thought it was 9 points for 5 gallons. Maybe it's less. But at any rate, uh, about 1061. And get the airlocks on. Oh, I gotta do the yeast. Okay, I actually gotta talk to you guys for a couple minutes about some cider stuff. And while I'm doing that, I thought I would have a little bit of last year. I make this cider mostly for my wife because she really likes it. I also like it. Um, but I just kind of only have it every now and then. Mm, that's yummy. Um, so, there are lots of ways to make cider. I kind of have done it several ways. I've done it the best practice way. I've done it more experimental ways. And I found the way that's just kind of easiest for me. Um, and that's kind of how I do it. I like to boost the gravity to get it to be, it'll end up being more like 8%, maybe even up to 9% if you were to add a couple pounds of sugar. I just like to have it that way. It's more like a, um, I don't know, it's almost like an apple wine that way, but it's just like a really hard cider. Um, you know, you don't have to do that. Um, also, the other thing that you would normally do is when you get the juice from the orchard, in the way that I do it, there's a lot, it's unpasteurized, so there's a lot of other organisms in there that will ferment that stuff if you just leave it. And some guys even just do it that way, just to kind of see how it turns out. But normally what you would do is you would add Camden tablets um, today and crush them up, stir them up in there, and then you would wait about 24 hours until you're adding your yeast. The Camden tablets will kill anything that's in the cider already. Now, I experimented one year without doing the Camden tablets, just adding my yeast right away, and then I did the other one with Camden tablets. I didn't find any difference. So I just thought it's one more step. I can eliminate. The other thing I do to kind of ensure uh, you know that my critters win and the other guys uh, don't take a hold as I do two packets of dried yeast and I find that that way there's just more than enough yeast this is going to ferment this thing out fully and quickly um, 71B Narbonne actually it says 71B1122 uh, is one that I've used most often. This year I'm going back to um, another one that I like, Red Star Premier Cuvée. Um, so actually these are exactly the same, my two different batches of cider this year. A lot of times I'll do them different and see if they taste any different. They usually don't taste that much different. So this year I'm going to see if uh, the yeast make a difference. They won't really make that much of a difference. Um, another note about yeast is you can definitely spend more money and get liquid cider yeast, you could use any type of beer yeast, English ale yeast, American ale yeast. Um, I just use these wine yeast. These are like 65 to 89 cents a packet or something. Very cheap, very easy. Uh, for sure, it's going to do a great job of fermenting. So basically at this point, I'm just going to dump this yeast in, put the airlocks on. They'll be fermenting in the low 60s, upper 50s. Uh, I don't know if the temperature range is on here, but both of these will be able to handle that kind of a range. These things usually go down into the 40s or, or, or upper 40s or you know mid to lower 50s. Uh, so maybe I'll do one final wrap up but uh, otherwise if you have any questions post them. I'll answer them the best I can. I'm not a cider uh, expert. I'm not an award winning cider maker. You're gonna get, if you ask five cider makers about what kind of yeast they want to use, you're probably gonna get seven different answers. So it's lots of different opinions. This is the way I do it. I like how it turns out. Most people like how it turns out. So that's how I'm presenting it. So I just dumped the yeast in. I did not proof it. Uh, I have so much yeast I'm not worried about uh, any of them you know not liking the way that I just dumped them in. I think they'll be fine. This one says 68 to 70. This one says 68 to 70. So They'll be going, I'll probably do a couple videos of them fermenting so you can see what that looks like and probably also do a little video update when I rack them to secondary and check the gravities. Alright guys, it's about an hour or maybe an hour and a half at the most since I pitched those the yeast and I was going to grab the carboy behind there to keg it and I noticed the airlocks were already bubbling course now they're now they won't be but I lifted up the shirts and I already see a Croizen forming so I thought normally it took 
um, a day or so, as I recall, for these things to really get going, but they're already going, so I'm not sure if it's slightly warmer than I maybe normally pitch these or what, but they're already off and running. So it has been two days now. Uh, this is the Premier Cuvée. Just kind of trying to get a little shot of what that looks like, and this one's a little different. Uh, this is the 71B, so same exact source of fermentable materials, but a little, you know, different croissants, and they're bubbling away now. All right, it's time to rack the ciders. And there it is. This one's actually still pretty yeasty. It's probably not quite done fermenting either. It's been pretty cold. Uh, this says 50 degrees. And the yeast temperature for this one I think goes down to... I forget. This one's warmer than the other one. So it did ferment as low as I would like. But I'm probably not going to be kegging it for several months. So just going to keep it. It tastes good. It's just not as uh, alcoholic as I would like. It's still pretty milky. Um, there's a lot of yeast in the suspension. There's some on the bottom. Um, but it's almost been a month, so I just wanted to transfer them and uh, get them off most of the yeast and have them sit some more. So, I've been shooting these videos for like six months, uh, but today is actually the day I'm finally kegging one of those batches, so I didn't want to put this video out until I could get that on the tape too. So, that's what we're doing today, so you'll get to see all the old videos that I made back in November, which is six months ago now. Here we go. Okay, so I don't remember if I've said this before in the other videos that I've been making, um, but there are so many ways to make cider. Uh, I'm talking about apple uh, cider here, not uh, you know another kind, but... Uh, this is the way I've done it. I'm going to tell you the ways I have done it. I'm going to tell you the way that I kind of do it now. I think I talked about Camden tablets at some point in this video a long time ago. Uh, that's a good example. That's something that I don't use anymore. Here's another thing that I used to use. Uh, potassium sorbate. Uh, it's like these little powdered uh, tablet kind of dropping things here that you measure out. Uh, what you would do with this, it says a half teaspoon per gallon to prevent renewed fermentation when sweetening. Well, that pretty much summarizes it. This is my cider. It's very tart and very dry. It fermented below zero, I believe. Uh, you know, below 1.000. Um, so I like to sweeten it. Lots of ways to sweeten it. Um, uh, I'll talk about that for a second. My preferred way is just apple juice concentrate doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, I like to use three of them for a five gallon batch. That gives it a little bit of sweetness, but it is certainly not particularly sweet. It's uh, semi-sweet at that point. But what will happen if you add more sugar uh, to the cider, which even though everything is pretty dropped out and it's pretty clear, there's still probably some yeast in there. Well, they could ferment this additional sugar. Now, um, there's a lot of factors here when you're packaging your cider. If you want to package cider uh, in bottles, but you want it to be sweet, um, you're really going to have a challenge because to add enough sugar um, to it, it would just, if it's going to ferment it, it's just going to make it really overcarbonated. It's just going to keep fermenting it. And, and otherwise, you can package it and maybe add a little bit of sugar, but then it's going to be really dry. Um, the way I do it is put it in the keg. That way, I can either add this potassium sorbate, which will help stop the yeast from doing any more fermentation of all this new sugar, but it will it'll it'll stop the yeast from doing that. Um, but then it will remain sweet, and then I can force carbonate it with CO2. That's the way I do it. That's the easiest way for me to do it. Um, you're just gonna have to figure out uh, how you want to drink it, and you know what you have available to you. Um, so. I say all that to say that I used to use the potassium sorbate to inhibit that fermentation. However, after I put it in here today, it's just going into the beer fridge, which is behind you. And it's pretty cool in there. So I've found by not using this, it still stays cool enough that the yeast can't really do a lot of fermentation 
um, of the new sugar that I'm adding. Maybe by the end of the keg I've noticed it's a little bit more alcoholic. Maybe they've done a little fermentation at a, at a slow temperature, but it doesn't bother me. And I actually kind of think that I was getting a little bit of a taste from this, even though you're not putting a lot of this in there that I didn't really care for. So I, a few years ago, started not using it, just like I don't use the Camden tablets. If you don't have to put something in there, might as well not do it. But anyway, basically the only thing left to show is how I actually get the cider in the keg, how I add the juice, and then kind of how I shake it up at the end. So let's get to it. There's really not a lot to show about adding this juice in here. The only thing that I do is I'll put one can in before I start racking it. I'll dump another can in about halfway. And then I'll kind of put one in at the top just to kind of help spread it out. Um, you could probably put them in all in right now. I'm still going to be shaking it. The other thing I do is I try to not splash it. Uh, any aeration, you know, right now is not the greatest thing. Of course, you got to have a skinny arm to be able to reach it down in there and dump it in there, but I'm just trying to minimize the splashing. And then, um, uh, yeah, that's about it. squeeze. And not like you don't trust me, but here's the third one. I'm going to add it before it gets super full in here just so it'll be a little easier to deal with. And also I got to deal with the carboy when it's getting, uh, you know, up to the, or down to the bottom. Ugh, now I can't get my hand out. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is pressurize this to 30 PSI. So i got to grab a, a line here off of another keg. And I'm not going to show you this, but close the other valves except to this one. So this is the only thing that's coming out Daddy, of this I gas don't want line. You that sticker. And then I'm doing the relief here. Alright, turn this up to 30. So, I'm just going to burp it a few times and get this up to 30 and then I'll do the last part. So, this keg is pressurized to 30 PSI just to get the lid really tight and I mean that's kind of how I always do it. Now this is an optional step. Um, and you actually, I have done this sometimes with the um, gas still on it. But I'm only doing this purely for the sake of um, mixing the concentrate into the cider. I'm not, I'm shaking it. Uh, am I worried about aerating or oxidizing it? No, because I've purged all of the headspace. Uh, probably did that like 15 times. The uh, only thing that's in this keg is cider and CO2 at the top. So, uh, and I've, my ciders last a long time on tap usually because um, my wife is drinking it mostly and they can be on tap for five or six months and they taste fine at the end. There's no oxidation from doing it this way. Otherwise, I'm going to put it <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna put it in there so that 10 PSI like all the rest of my other things and uh, you know, several days it'll be carbonated and that's about it. That's how I do my ciders. Works for me. Makes a really nice, strong, uh, semi-sweet cider and people seem to like it. Hope you enjoyed the video.